Hello, welcome back. I'm like disconcerted by my very ghostly appearance in the camera right now because I'm wearing a lot of makeup, but like an incomplete amount of makeup at the same time. And that's because we are going to be swatching a ton of blushes on my face today. That's this weird vibe that I have going on right now. This very just like here, there, but not everywhere kind of makeup look, but it's about to get even weirder because I have aptly labeled this bag of blush right here. And these are all of my beige blushes. I, it's like, I don't really know what else to call them. They're like desaturated pinks and mauves, and they're kind of like nudes for me, but like, it's just that je ne sais quoi beige. <laughs> like it's a beige, it's like a desaturated beige kind of color. It's very specific, right? If you appreciate this kind of thing, you know, and if you're like deeper skin tone and you're like, I mean, there's a color like that for me, but it's not this, feel free to skip. <laughs> This is just a very, very specific color theory exercise, mainly for people with pale skin. So I apologize in advance, but if you just want to be entertained, it will be entertaining. So yeah, I've got creams, I've got powders, I've got new, I've got old, and we're basically going to be drawing the distinctions between like the nuanced differences in these colors and textures. So it's gonna be in the weeds. Welcome to the weeds, fam. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so because I don't know if anybody really like understood what I said in the beginning. I want to go ahead and introduce you to what like my ideas are of these kinds of shades first and foremost. Let's put on a headband. I don't know. I'm looking like a little girl playing dress up right now. It's just kind of a lot. <laughs> The main characters that I think of when I think of a beige blush are as follows. I think, you know, it's gonna start in the cream category with Mimi from Westman Atelier. We'll go ahead and swatch her. This is one of those, I mean, I'm just gonna keep saying this, but it's like the color that's hard to describe, especially if you are kind of my skin twin. Like you put it on, you're like, ah, it's awesome, rosy, beigey. It's really, really pretty is what it is. I don't know if y'all want me to like blend them out because I don't know if I want to do that because then they're going to blend with my complexion product. I would rather you just see the trueness of the color. Just trust me when I say that this blends out beautifully and the finish on it is not ultra dewy. For somebody who does have dry skin, I find that this almost goes to like a hybrid finish on me. It's a really intelligent product and all of us when tell you stuff is really expensive, but they're really fantastic and they stay good. The formulas stay good for a really long time unlike a lot of like clean beauty formulas I've just like been always really impressed with you know they set out to shorten your routine and I really feel like if that's what you're wanting Westman Atelier will simplify your routine because the colors are so dialed in so this is again Mimi it's a site exclusive for Westman Atelier so it like never goes on sale but again kind of like I was talking about in the last video these site exclusives they're always these just like desaturated oh it's like this perfect not quite anything hard to put your finger on sort of nude shade for fair skin so, I don't know. Y'all tell me your feelings on that. I do find it a little fishy. Then we have her very close dupe, in my opinion, and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick Blush in Latte. That, friends, is Latte. And what you'll find with these, I don't know what it is about them, but they change in the light. So it's like, you'll see I'm, I'm like this, you're like, oh, one of those is a lot peacher, and then I'll turn and you're like, wait, nope, the other one is a lot... The nuances are kind of hard to pin down unless they're sitting directly in the same light. So when I do like that and kind of take both of them out of the light, you can see that Mimi has a little bit more peach in it and this one has a little bit more purple in it. But when you have them all sheared out on the cheeks, I defy you to tell them apart. So yeah, this one's $30 the last time I bought it and this was $48. So, you know, pick your fighter, but they're really, really similar. They're similar in formula too. And I do think that some of this exercise is going to be finding out what these shades aren't. Like I might have some blushes in here where we discover very quickly, like they don't fall into this category, but I was just kind of going on instinct. Okay, next. This, this is a big one, right? This is the Kierweiss Cream Blush in Inner Glow. You look at that pan and there's something about the color and the texture, that shimmer on it, that just makes you go, what the heck color is that? You know what I mean? Like your brain just kind of fritzes. It's like, what is that? So I'm gonna put it over here next to Mimi. It is both even less saturated than either one of those. 
And also, like I said, it's got a funny actual like texture to it. So when it shears out on the skin, you get this reflective quality where it almost kind of disappears from some angles and it's magic. It's really, really fantastic. And you're getting the base pigment, which is very similar to the other two, but there's something about the actual color of the shimmer that gives it an even cooler tone. Do you see that when I'm like that? It's almost taupe. It's really special. I can't really compare anything to it in terms of the effect that it gives on the skin. And every time you use it, you're just like, I don't get it, but I trust it. You know, <laughs> that's the most I can say about Interglow. And at the time of filming this video, Kierweiss is running friends and family 25% off site wide. Hope it's still happening. Get while the getting is good. Our next main character that I know y'all all showed up for. I mean, literally like, <laughs> If you saw the title of this video, you clicked through, and if I didn't include this, you would be like, this is a crime. Straight to jail. Condensate from Phytosurgence. This is a brand new, a brand new thingy of it. You get to touch this. This is part of the, like, Toasted collection that they put out, and it is, like, the most desaturated, almost gray mauve you'll ever see. Like, this is a color that looks incredible on Hannah Louise Poston because she also has very desaturated, almost leaning gray, like undertones, like silver undertones almost. So it is a little bit too gray for me. Like I can get it to work, but I'm not sure it's super flattering on me, but it is really valuable to see it by comparison to the ones that are more at home on my skin because you're just like, okay, that's a noticeably different color. You know, I really like this formula. It has been likened to kind of chocolate ganache, the way that it sort of melts on your finger. It's highly pigmented. It's incredibly easy to work with. It wears forever. And th there are a ton of colors. The whole Toasted collection is absolutely gorgeous. And this one just happens to be like the most extreme in terms of the desaturation. I did though pull Fume, which is not from that collection. And she is just a little bit easier for me to wear. You see, like that's just a much easier shade on my skin, but it's also more saturated by comparison even than like Mimi or Latte. And it's a little bit more purple. Like it's the perfect kind of like in-between mauve shade that does go to like a pretty flattering, natural looking pink on my skin. Because everything does turn pink on me. That's kind of an art math thing. Because I have just enough warmth in my skin that it'll kind of counterbalance the purple in something and take the edge off of it. And then what is revealed is kind of a more saturated or warm pink, so. That's why. Next, we have Magic Hour in the Beach Please from Tower 28. So I think that you can find pretty much any color in these at this point. They've really put out so many of these like titled products, but you can tell that's still by comparison, a very on the nose pink, is it not? It's quite desaturated when you put it on, but by comparison to all of these, you're just dealing with a much more like easily named shade. The word nude does not come to mind, you know? Then we have the Blush Please Glow Play Blush. So not to be confused with Beach Please Magic Hour, but this is from MAC and this is that funky putty consistency. I like it in concept, the actual formula, but I'm really not sure about Wow, those are the same. Those are the same. Holy moly, those are like the same color. Huh, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> That's MAC Glow Play in Blush Please, which a lot of people think of as being a very nude blush. And it's subtle, yes, but nude it is not. I don't think it's very beige. So I think that those, <laughs> accidentally, we have stumbled into a very symmetrical comparison. Now, before we get too far, I do want to swatch Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk because it's different than, than these. And this, these are actually really, that's a good kind of like visual landmark, how similar this is to Magic Hour and also to Blush Please. They're just really similar. That's a really helpful visual comparison because like I always think of this as being so desaturated by comparison to a lot of like the pink blushes because I always tend to buy things in these duos, right? If I'm trying a new blush line, my favorite way to do it, the most useful way for me to do it, and if I'm going to be able to get the most use out of it, I want to buy kind of a medium rosy pink, something that's a little bit cooler toned, and then whatever they have there for like an apricot coral shade. And I feel like that can give me the push pull of like cool and warmth on my skin. And that's typically how I decide whether I even like the formula because I've kind of taken the color part of it like out of the equation. So 
All that to say, this is the cool pink of the Pillow Talk wands that I bought. And I do constantly compare it to things and I'm like, oh, it's so desaturated, it's so desaturated. It's clearly not as desaturated by comparison. Like it's just not as nude. It's still quite decidedly pink. So that's news you can use. I'm looking really cute right now. <laughs> this is a vibe. Okay, so next I have here Dusty Pink, and I promise we are gonna get into the powders too. We will get into the powders. We're just doing creams first, I think, accidentally. There are not that many more creams. This is from Typology, and this is a really sheer formula. It doesn't have its own dry down. It also is just like, just really beautiful. Like it has this like skincare quality to it. So here we see a shade that does have more nuance to it than those other ones. Like it is less saturated, but it's almost a little bit deeper. And I think that that's because you don't typically concentrate it quite as much on the skin, but it does have a little bit, you see a little bit more brown to it. And I like that about it. It's not cool toned. It's almost a little bit browner and it sort of starts to feel like it belongs up here, but not quite. So these are still my superlative ladies of just like, this is a desaturated cream blush. And these are, we're getting into decidedly pink territory. And that's not a bad thing. I think that it's important, especially for people who don't have like, you know, ultra pale skin tones. The message here, the, uh, the valuable information hopefully is like, hey, I have tried something that does feel a little bit too like towards one end of the spectrum of like being too cool or too desaturated or whatever. And like maybe one of these is going to work better for you and it'll give you the same effect that something like, you know, these gives on me if you have a deeper skin tone. So here's one that is going to just, it's going to be a curveball, Okay. And that, I never even wear this because I feel like it is, it's right up here with condensate, but this is the inner glow pigment, not to be confused with Westman Atelier shade inner glow. This is called the inner glow pigment from Ritual Defeat in the shade desire. Okay. And this is purple. Like we thought condensate was gray purple. That's purple. Again, it's like all the way on the polar opposite end. Almost to gray and like I can't really wear it. It sort of kills the vibe on my skin. I did not realize like how much of like a lost boy I was gonna look like <laughs> as I was doing this with all my adornments and everything. It's gonna be a fun thumbnail. <laughs> Okay, deep cut here. I think I only wore this one time in a video and it was when I first tested my Monica Blender Blender Cover, which if you're wondering why you haven't seen the Blender Cover in a while, it's because it broke. It's in a glass container. I think I over tightened it or something and the whole thing just shattered. And I was like, I don't wanna put glass on my face. So I had to throw it away. So I'll probably buy another one soon and be more careful with it. But that's why you haven't seen it. It's not because I don't like it. It's because it's in the garbage. Or as my kid says, garbage. <laughs> he like gets done with his yogurt and he's like, I go throw it in the garbage. <laughs> Cute as they are. So anyway, this is the liquid flush cheek tint in motion and it's from Monica Blender. And if I recall, it's quite matte and it just kind of wasn't, wasn't the vibe for me. Yeah, it's very, very matte. It's a little bit like harder for me to work with, but it is a little bit paler, not just desaturated, but like literally has more white to it than a lot of these. Like you can see the actual color as it's drying down seems to have more of like a white backing to it, which means that it's going to work on very fair skin tones, but it's also going to be a lot more likely to go ashy on deeper skin tones, you know, much more so than something that has like, you know, like this, that has that like, almost like translucent quality when you sheared out the typology. Yeah, it's like adding coverage, it's drying down matte. It's not my favorite formula. It's a little bit difficult to work with and I don't really like the finish of it once it actually does dry down. But the color is, you know, right on par with our Tower 28, our Pillow Talk, and our, what was this again? The MAC Glow Play. I feel like this, obviously, this pink right here is a much easier color to find. All right, next, I have hope from, I just, I have hope in general. I have hope from Rare Beauty. So this is just your very, very run of the mill pale pink. And I do, I feel like we're kind of in this territory now where like these kind of lack the je ne sais quoi. It's, important again to kind of draw the delineation so that you're just because I this is something I get asked all the time is to swatch these things next to each other but it is a little disappointing when you see them all together and so many of them are the same color <laughs> like more or less like this is you know the Monica blender is giving a little bit tiny tiny bit more peach you can see a little bit of orange kind of you know yellow emerging from it as it dries down and it's in contrast to hope over here which definitely has a little bit more mauve to it but they're still just like kind of right on the nose just a rosy pink and 
I know that like, we don't know everything that goes on behind the scenes with these brands and you don't wanna make these like sweeping generalizations, but in a lot of cases, there are brands that have kind of like business daddies, right? They go through incubators and stuff and they will tell them the colors that they need to release. It's like, you need to put out a rose, you need to put out a peach, you need to put out a tan, you need to put out a berry, whatever. That's probably why some of these kind of rush to the middle and the middle of my face. Now, someone who is not subject to any undue influence, someone who literally only takes influence from her own brain and from her amazing community, is my friend Kiki G of Salt New York. So these are colors that have evolved over time and I wanted to swatch Coco. I know that this is gonna be kind of a wild card. This is just like not what you would typically think of as one of these shades, but it's just important. I feel like it's an important thing to, to do because it's like, you might be looking at all of these and going, God, I mean, is this what the whole video is gonna be? Is just you swatching pink blushes and wishing they were like nude, you know? But look at Coco. Coco is not pure brown. It has a lot of rosiness to it. Like you look at it in the pan, especially next to like her brown bronzer, right? Her deep brown bronzer. And you're like, wait, that's like decidedly rosy by comparison. So it's taking it in another direction, right? It is like, you see these and you're just like, okay, that's like that color I can't really describe that's sort of this like gray nude, you know, like gray beige. And then this is going like in the other direction of saying like chocolate beige with a little bit of rose to it. And it's very flattering and it's a great thing to like mix with other things. I guarantee there are people watching right now, maybe like, you know, 1% of people that went, oh my God, I've been looking for that color this whole time. Cause if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. And like Coco was a shade that Kiki put out that was not intended to be permanent. And the demand was so overwhelming that she made it permanent to the collection when she re-released all the colors. So yeah, it's an important color. It's just important and it's a great formula too. So yeah, I mean, you can definitely see that like, even though it's brown by comparison, it still has something really blushy to it, which is just really nice. It's almost reminding me of, of these. All right, and finally, in the cream category, I wanted to go ahead and show y'all Persona Teddy because I feel like some people do think that it is a really good nude blush. For me, it's very orange. It goes towards bronzer. You'll know if that's for your skin tone or not, but it's not for my skin tone. Do you see that? Like how it just kind of stands out orange and like just kind of proving a point here. <laughs> like if this is your color, think hard about whether these are your color, you know? Because <laughs> like, they don't really belong on the same face, at least not at the same time. Like I, I have not been able to get Teddy to work. All right, so. That concludes the creams, but we're just gonna keep going with the powders as well. So I'm gonna start here with Dolly from Buxom. This is the Wanderlust Primer Infused Blush. I believe that this was a recommendation from Amanda. You know, can that be sheared out to something that is quite nude-ish? You know what I mean? Something that is sheer enough that you see a little bit less of just that like punch of color. Sure, but it's giving kind of magenta. It's got a little bit of a blue shift to it. And for something that looks so desaturated in the pan, by comparison, we're talking about something that is actually quite committed color-wise. Now, this, well, this is one I'm gonna be interested in seeing. So this is like wildly, wildly, wildly fair, right? So this is Bliss, the butterfly blush from Shantikai. And like, it's almost a setting powder on me. Like, look how light that is. I have used it the same way that I used the Victoria Beckham bronzer, the light shade and the bronzing brick in shade one to, you know, blend something else into my skin because it's so close to my skin tone. Isn't that interesting? Like how, how extreme some of these look next to each other. Beautiful formula absolutely appalling amount of product for the money. And it's fine, I don't reach for it that much, just I think because I'm just kind of butthurt about paying so much for something that arrived and was like the size of a gumball. But it is a really kind of interesting shade because it is so brightly fair and it's like actually peach, you know? It's not just like close to my skin tone, it's actually peach by comparison. Okay, y'all know that we need to dive into two very specific swatches here. And that is the new Giorgio Armani right here and Pat McGrath Flirtatious, which I had to buy again for this video because I have misplaced her. So I have a brand new one here. I mean, I've already, I've already swatched it and stuff, but you know, the embossing is still really pretty fresh. Let's do it right here. That is Pat McGrath Flirtatious really, really heavily swatched. 
and y'all know the way that that goes on, the way that it like blends out is so thin and sheer and light that like really what we're doing here is comparing for undertone the same way that Dolly looks really, really like heavy on the skin. It doesn't go on like that. It is a much like sheer formula. I'm just kind of trying to show you all for comparison's sake here. So then we have 10 from Giorgio Armani, the new one that's just the, the site exclusive. And I've been saying that they are so similar to each other in concept, you know? Not exactly, not exactly. Look at 10. 10 is like straight up peach pink by comparison. It's actually incredible how much the Giorgio Armani looks more like the Chantecai and the Pat McGrath looks more like all of these kind of like middle of the road friends over here. You know what I mean? It looks more like pillow talk. That's just really interesting. Now, do they go on differently? Yeah, you know, like I said, Flirtatious is one of those shades that's so like it's such a thin veil on the skin that like that's not exactly the color that you're gonna see but it's also important i think to see the full saturation of the shade on the skin the next one that occurred to me it's very important here is rosy beige 05 from gucci another one where you're just like yeah that's gonna be almost invisible on the skin you know when you're actually shearing it out so this let's put it over here is what she looks like Again, a little bit more saturated than you would think. Similar, oddly enough, to Coco from Salt New York, right? So like if you have Coco and you were considering the Gucci one, pass. Like they're really, really similar. I mean, obviously the Gucci is powder, but it's also $50. <laughs> if you wanted to save yourself $50, there you go. And it's actually, both of those are really giving something more similar, just in actual tone, to Inner Glow from Kierweiss. Right? It's just that kind of in-betweeny, can't put my finger on it kind of color. Pretty cool. Then we have Make Beauty Celestial Rose. Their powder formulas are off the charts, incredible. But I mean, they're all kind of falling in the same family of being like a kind of mauve leaning brown beige, brown nude-ish, you know? It's just a rosy color. And like, that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It just means that it exists a lot of places. These are not particularly like unique. And so if you're looking at your collection and you're like, well, but is that one that Khaki's using better than the one that I'm looking at? Like, there's your answer. And there's a reason that I end up reaching for one over another one. And it's usually the formula. And that's why I have been going for either Pat McGrath when I had it <laughs> or I had to rebuy it. Or like I love the Giorgio Armani is just because the formulas are really easy to work with. And I'm like more likely to grab that than I am like the Gucci or even the Make Beauty. Like I love the Make Beauty powder formula, but the Armani is even easier for me to work with. I did pull two Clinique blushes here that I have. These are the Pop blushes and I have Heather Pop, the Cheek Pop is what they're called. Uh, Cheek Pop and, uh, come on Khaki, Heather Pop and Garnet Pop. Garnet Pop is gonna be more in like the lavender area. So you're seeing that against desire. Hello? Please listen to this entire message. To confirm, please press one. Thank you. Please listen to this entire message. ID, your current medication. Please visit our medicine and complete your make a change. Masks are now optional. Okay. What was I doing? I don't remember what I was doing. Oh, we're looking at desire from, <laughs> from ritual defeat. And Garnet Pop is very, very similar to it, right? It's got a little bit more pink, a little bit more honest to God kind of mauve going on, but we're still in that same territory. You know, I would compare it to, oh, whatever the diddle I put up there. What was that? Oh yeah, Fume. Fume from uh, Phytosurgeons. Very, very similar. Fume is gonna have a little bit more of that pink to it. It is truly mauve. Whereas I do feel like we are in kind of this like almost gray purple territory with Garnet Pop. And then we have Heather Pop, the much pinker one. Boop, see? And that's just right there with like kind of everything else. <laughs> It's just right there in like pink and woo, the longer it sits on my skin, the pinker it gets. That was a really good example, actually, a good visual of how everything tries to turn pink on me. You know, these are not claiming to be anything super nuanced. And so I think that like that shade is, you know, kind of purposefully pretty pink on the nose, even though the formula does allow for it to go on a little bit more sheerly. But like, yeah, I would say that Heather Pop is not even in the category. Then I have this. This hard panned pretty much immediately and drove me crazy, but this is Vintage Love from Lawless. Not my favorite formula, not just kind of, they've just never really done anything that totally blew my mind, but it's a pretty color. 
it's just a little hard to work with. I feel like her powder products are just very like, they're for the heavy handed. <laughs> like, and I, I guess they should be for the light handed, but like they always go on heavy handed. But we are looking at something that you could call a true mauve, which is kind of hard to pin down sometimes. So it is a lot pinker than like these purpley shades here. It is a little bit closer to, you know, fume, if not even a little bit pinker than that, but still not a formula I totally recommend running out for. And then the last one that I pulled, oddly enough, is Sweet Wildflower from Wayne Goss. And this is the shade Dusty Rose. And it's gonna give you like even a little bit more, you know, the skin tone quality. It's almost a little bit redder. And it starts to get into, you know, a similar vibe as maybe Teddy here, but just a little bit richer, a little bit more like terracotta even when you have it built up like that. So I don't know, it, it definitely is one that I still use to like break up a look. You know what I mean? Like if you have like something that's a little too contrasty, a sheer wash of something like that can really help bridge the gap. But again, if I haven't said it enough, like the point here is to look at the actual undertone differences between these because you, I mean, you can pretty much make any of them work, right? Like the reason they're still in my collection is because I make them work. And also because I, you know, do want to be able to swatch them, but like when you brush these onto the skin, it's important to have this kind of comparison in mind because it's going to help you make a better decision about like how you're trying to get where you're going with the look that you're trying to achieve. It's like, I'm looking at my eyes and my eyes have something that's like a warm gold to them, right? I don't necessarily want my local color on my cheeks to be something that focuses like this heavily cool. I probably want to use something that's gonna pop a little bit more on the cheeks or even go towards like a little bit more apricot, depending on your undertone, like how many standard deviations it is from your undertone. So if you're really, really like desaturated, not even necessarily cool toned, but like desaturated whatever, anything is going to show up more saturated on you. And I do, I'll link my kind of interactive color wheel. It is pretty rudimentary, but the way that you interact with it is to click everything turns on me. So it's like everything turns pink on me, everything turns whatever. And like, you'll be able to identify your undertones and that will help you to understand, oh, this is why I feel like I'm going crazy when I buy a product that someone recommends to me and it does something totally wacky. That's not what happened on them kind of thing. And that will help you make more educated buying decisions or even application decisions in the future. Just knowing that like what's in the pan is going to translate differently onto your skin because of your undertones. So so when we're talking about the nuances between these, it's like, you know, I think that since they all kind of fall into this very medium category, this very kind of desaturated medium beigey category, it can be easy to think like they're all going to do the same thing, but actually depending on like what your skin needs, like what your undertones need, some of these could take you in a wildly opposite direction from what you were actually going for. You know, like for me, it's like, I look at Teddy and I'm like, oh, that's something that, you know, it's, it could be good if I take it in a warm direction. Actually, I really can't get my way out of it when I put that on my cheeks. It just does something really overwhelmingly unflattering on me. It makes me look like I'm wearing the wrong color of foundation. And condensate being something that tests the limits of like what I am able to wear on my face. I still find this to be too extreme for me. And that's just kind of the, you know what I mean? That's the push pull. It was very valuable as an exercise for me to see what the true colors of these actually are because they do all live in the same liminal space in my brain and they're actually all very different from each other. Well, they're not all different from each other. I could just sit here and babble on about this stuff, but I think that you'll get the picture. Let me know if there are other shade values that you want me to do this for. If you want me to do it for all my corals, I'm gonna do it for my bronzers soon. That's gonna happen. We can also all help each other out in the comments. I think that that's the beauty of it. That's actually why I try to foster a really kind comment section. It's not always that I'm, you know, super sensitive to criticism or something like that. It's that I want it to feel like a really kind and welcoming place for people to actually have discourse among themselves and, you know, toxicity and things like that. Just, you know, don't, don't really foster that. So I hope that y'all feel comfortable kind of like talking amongst yourselves down there about your undertones and things like that so that you can kind of get the lay of the land. And hopefully that will be as helpful or even more helpful than my singular advice could be. But that's the vibe. And normally y'all, I would take my big BK 105 and smear this all around, but there is a self-setting property to the concealer that I have on my face and it's already like dried, dried down. Like if I did that, nothing would happen. <laughs> like nothing would happen. Like, and besides I have powder and cream, like nothing would happen. It would just go 
and like I'd be like yanking on my face and I don't really want to do that. So this is what you get today. <laughs> You get face swatch khaki, so I hope that this was valuable for y'all, or if not, at least I hope it was fun. <laughs> and if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel and the algorithm helps other people find me. Subscribe if you have not already. I would really appreciate it. And I will put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy. I'll put my face swatch playlist up here for y'all because this is a thing that I do sometimes. And I love y'all so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!